What's up guys, it's Patricia from TarantulaHeaven.com and today we're going to talk about something that I wish there were more videos about. Uh, what to do if your tarantula gets into a molting emergency and you need to figure out something to help them. This is something that none of us, no matter how experienced we are, ever want to be faced with. But unfortunately, with time and also the number of tarantulas we get, we increase the chances that we will deal with this one day, unfortunately. Um, and I want to first introduce the big star. Before I get too far, I have Spidey here, my little rose hair. Um, she's actually pretty elderly, but I keep calling her little because she's always going to be like my little baby. And she is uh, very slowly grooming herself, so I hope that you enjoy watching her. She's really beautiful and just uh, the most adorable. So uh, I hope she puts on a little show for you guys while I'm talking. Um, so anyway, tarantula molting emergencies. You know, we all get excited when our tarantula starts molting, but we also, at least myself, get extremely nervous because thinking of all the things that might go wrong. And especially when things are moving very, very slowly and it's taking quite a long time, um, it's easy to start getting into the mindset of, wow, this is taking too long. I think my tarantula is stuck. And so I wanted to kind of talk about, you know, how do you know when it's been too long? And also what do you do if something is actually going wrong? This is a really helpless feeling, um, feeling like your tarantula is stuck in their molt because, you know, they can't really communicate like cats or dogs can. And they're also a very fragile creature and very dangerous creature too. So, you know, it's really hard to figure out what to do. It's very easy to feel helpless. This is something that's really normal to feel. So be really easy on yourself if you find yourself in this situation. And it's really hard to make this type of call. And I feel like we really shouldn't judge people when they have to make this call because there's so many different factors involved. And unless you've really been in this position, I fortunately have not, but you really can't understand what somebody's going through. And, you know, I feel like, you know, I see tarantula groups, um, you know, the way people interact with sometimes when, when someone's made, um, you know, a little mistake that ended up in a fatality. You know, we really don't know what somebody's going through. So I encourage all of us to be really gentle on ourselves and also gentle with each other because, you know, we all have the best intentions in this hobby if you truly care about these creatures. And, you know, this is just a really tough call to make. And a lot of times there's really no right answer. And sometimes we just have to do our best. Now it is important to know how long molting actually takes so that you don't try to intervene in what could actually be a perfectly fine normal molt. You know, many of you probably know this, but if you're a newer tarantula owner, you may not. Um, so tarantulas need to be left completely alone when they're molting. They're very vulnerable. They are absolutely helpless. So um, you do not want to interfere unless you absolutely have to and your tarantula's life depends on it. A few things that you should know before trying to intervene is that while tarantulas usually molt on their backs, uh, a tarantula molting upright or in a weird position is not a death sentence. There have actually been a lot of tarantulas who have molted in very tight quarters, uh, in weird positions, and have molted completely upright, and they've done this successfully. Of course, that's not ideal. Tarantulas are supposed to molt on their backs, but that doesn't always happen. Tarantulas do whatever they want and uh, sometimes they just do weird stuff and it works out. So I've, you know, I've seen a lot of tarantula owners saying that their tarantulas have molted upright and they've been okay. So in these instances, it's good to just kind of keep an eye on them if you can, but you know, just because your tarantula is molting upright doesn't necessarily mean that you need to put them on their back or um, get involved. The other very important point I want to make is that you need to consider your tarantula's age before you decide if you need to uh, get involved in a molt or not. Because older tarantulas, uh, like Spidey, take a really long time to molt. And if you don't know this, you might think that your tarantula is stuck or something or something's wrong. And there's actually nothing going wrong. It's just that it's a really, really slow process. So it's good for you to know how long molts actually take so that you can know when something's actually going wrong. Uh, so for example, Spidey, she is pretty elderly. I'm not sure of her exact age, but her molts are several years apart now, and they always have been since I got her a few years ago. So um, she has only molted, I think, three times in my care, and I've had her for over six years. So she's pretty old. And you know, what younger spiders molt more frequently. Uh, Blinky, my little sling, molts every few months, uh, every like two to three months. So that's a big difference. 
you know, Spidey's mall, it's because she's so old. I think her last one took about 20 hours, almost 24 hours. And that is extremely stressful, of course. And, you know, sometimes it's really hard to get through that period when you're so worried about her and it looks like nothing's happening and she's making such slow progress. But you have to chill out. You have to manage your own anxiety and just trust that their spider instincts will work out. And, you know, unfortunately, older tarantulas do tend to have molting complications sometimes, but um, it doesn't mean that you need to get involved just because they're old and they're taking a long time. Um, Spidey regularly takes uh, over 16 hours to molt and I've just had faith and you know everything seems to look normal when I you know peer in every now and then to see how things are going and I see that she's making a little bit of progress and that she's wiggling around a tiny bit so you just got to be patient with these older tarantulas. Now if you have a younger tarantula um, it should only take a few hours so if you have a really young tarantula and it's taking over 16 hours or over 24 hours uh, that's not a good sign and you might actually want to do something and see what's going on um, so generally a molt that takes over 24 hours is somewhat concerning especially if it's not an older spider uh, older spiders can have a little bit more leniency there so you want to start thinking about what you need to do next so first you kind of want to assess the situation as best as you can without bothering the tarantula you want to you know quietly open the tank if you can look inside and see what's going on is there a certain place that they're stuck is there a certain part of the molt or the exoskeleton that is not coming off like what is really going on and i think that this information is really really good to know because um, if you do have to act and help your tarantula out you need to act quickly you don't want to be researching for hours this is just good to know even before you get a tarantula or before your tarantula has its first molt with you because um, the, the longer you wait its body is going to harden and it's going to make it harder for you to get them out. So you want to make sure that you're reacting when your tarantula, even though they might be fragile, at least their body's a little bit more soft and pliable and they haven't, you know, they haven't swelled up yet in their new body. So it's easier to intervene and help them out when they're in this more new phase. So you want to make sure that you are not, um, just spending hours while your tarantula is stuck in its molt researching on what you need to do. It's good to always be prepared. So I'm gonna go through a few different options and these are, you know, ordered in level of severity. So the first option, if you're having a molting emergency with your tarantula and you've noticed that they are stuck and that the molting process has stopped for a period of time and they're not making any progress or things kind of look weird or something's malformed in their, in their molt, so the first thing you can do is just raise the humidity. Take a look at their water dish. Do they have enough water in there? Usually a full water dish is enough to give them the humidity that they need to molt because the humidity kind of provides their body with the lubrication it needs to slide out of its exoskeleton. So if their water dish is low, try to carefully fill it without disturbing them or making too much noise or vibration in the tank. You could also overflow it a little bit onto the substrate if the substrate around the water dish is not near them. Um, so sometimes that can be enough to kind of give them enough humidity. The second thing you can do if you think the situation is a little bit more severe and your tarantula needs more humidity, you can kind of make an ICU or its own little intensive care unit. And some people are kind of iffy on the effectiveness of ICUs. Um, I certainly think that they're a good thing to try if you are not ready to operate on your tarantula yet. Um, so you could do this two different ways. Um, one is the least invasive, which is when if you can, you can, uh, like if you have a small enclosure that can be easily moved or you can move it yourself um, without hurting or you know bothering the tarantula too much, you can just simply take their enclosure and put them in a closed bathroom and run the shower on hot. Obviously don't put their enclosure in the shower or anything like that. You don't want any water on your tarantula, but um, you know, putting them in a bathroom that's closed with the shower running, the steam is going to create that humidity and provide them with more lubrication and moisture. So you could do that um, and you can see if that kind of improves things. And then a more drastic approach to the ICU is to actually make an ICU and put the tarantula in the ICU. So to do that, I'm going to link a really good video from John 3800 on how to do that. But what you could do is you could take a regular um, plastic Tupperware, nothing too big, but nothing too small that it's going to constrict the tarantula either. And you want to put paper towels or tissues in that. And you want to add some water. So you could do this two different ways. 
you could add a little water dish in there um, if there's room in there for the spider in that, or you can slightly, not a lot, just slightly dampen the tissues or paper towels. Um, and I'm saying like very, very lightly, um, cause you just want to add some moisture so that when you put your tarantula you take them from their regular enclosure and put them in the ICU, that there's going to be humidity when you put the lid on. And of course, when you put the lid on, you're going to want holes in there cause the tarantula still needs to breathe and they need airflow. So that is another way to do the ICU. And that kind of puts them in their own little enclosed humidity container where hopefully they'll have enough moisture and the humidity will make them easier to continue the molt if they are having trouble. All right, now we're starting to get to tarantula surgery <laughs> and no one wants to be in this position. I hope I myself am never in this position, but I feel as though I've watched enough tarantula videos and researched this enough that if I had to, you know, I could. And it's good for tarantula owners, especially if you're not, if you don't even have your first tarantula yet, um, to know that you might need to do this one day. So this is all about being prepared for a spider or a pet that you're gonna get, knowing all the different possibilities, knowing that there aren't tarantula vets in every town. A lot of people will never have tarantula vets near them. A lot of animal hospitals do not treat tarantulas. So you are their surgeon. You are their doctor, you are their everything in many cases. So if you are not lucky enough to have an exotics doctor in your town or near you, you're gonna have to do this. And that's something to really consider before you get a tarantula. So if you are in this position, if your tarantula is stuck, if you've noticed that part of their leg is stuck, there's a certain thing in their molt that they can't get off, you're gonna have to cut it away. So I would say that this could be done after you've tried humidity and it didn't work because a lot of times the humidity is really all you need or all they need to encourage the molt a little bit more. But if that is not working and they're really stuck, you might have to cut them out. And you'll need a few things for this. You will need tweezers, preferably some really uh, sharp ones that you can get really precise with. Uh, you want to have a very sharp cutting tool, whether it's very sharp scissors or a scalpel or exacto knives. And you also want to have some sort of bonding uh, tool as well, because in case you make a mistake or something happens with the malt where you accidentally cut your tarantula or something rips, tarantula blood doesn't clot. So you're going to have to mend that wound as fast as possible because they can bleed out. So. The kind of bonding stuff that you can use is cornstarch. You can use flour. Um, some people even use petroleum jelly. Uh, some people have even used super glue, uh, which is effective, but uh, people don't usually suggest that because it's really easy for them to get stuck on other things. And super glue is also very chemically. So I wouldn't suggest that, but if that's the only thing that you have in your house and you need to save your tarantula, then do it. You know, it's worth the risk. Um, but usually people have cornstarch or flour, um, so that is also something to have on hand before you even start the process. So you're going to have all your tools, you are going to be very, very careful and meticulous about this, and you can slowly start to cut away at the old exoskeleton, being very careful not to cut what's underneath. And I think that, you know, the easiest parts of tarantula exoskeletons are obviously the legs, because uh, you can usually just cut a little bit and slide it out and the new leg will be okay. Um, but you know, sometimes legs are malformed during molts, so it gets a little bit harder. And I'm going to point to a really, really awesome video in the description of uh, Rob Carman. He is a really great tarantula resource, and he did a great series of himself operating on his tarantula when it was having a molting problem, uh, his tarantula Sammy. So I'll link that below. Unfortunately, Sammy didn't survive, but I think that his videos and his series on this is just really, really good as far as um, um, learning how to do this and you know what kind of steps to take so uh, I would definitely recommend that and I also have another video from Tennessee tarantulas link below that shows how to get a sling away from its exoskeleton if it's stuck because uh, operating on slings can be very hard so he does a great job as far as you know dampening a q-tip and kind of pulling the old molt away from the baby spider so you can also check that below and the last one is amputation. 
Uh, like I said, we are doing tarantula surgery now. If it gets this uh, severe, we might have to amputate a leg or something. If a tarantula's leg or part of its body is malformed, um, you might have to just cut the whole thing off to save your tarantula. Now, I will say that legs are the easiest to do this with because uh, you can just cut it at the joint and there will be less bleeding and it's an easier cut. So that would be how you wanna do that. You wanna just cut it at the joint, the joint that's, you know, closest to the wound. And then of course, be ready with your cornstarch or flour or whatever to um, be able to clot that blood. And a lot of tarantula owners aren't gonna wanna do this and I totally understand, but you know, it's okay. And it's okay if you have a few legs that you need to cut out because uh, your tarantula will regenerate these with time. With every molt, they will grow their legs back and there have been several reports of tarantulas having to either, you know, they have lost six of their legs or they had to get them amputated through a molt and they've been fine. You know, like if you are a very dedicated owner and you can help your tarantula eat and tend to them um, until they can regenerate these lives and live their life normally, um, they will make it usually. So gonna need a very sharp tool, obviously, like your scalpel or exacto knife. You're gonna need your bonding uh, material, whether it's spray dressing the petroleum jelly or, you know, some water, flour, or cornstarch, um, you are going to need those things right on hand so that after you am amputate, you can just mix up some water and cornstarch and put it right there with a Q-tip so that your tarantula doesn't bleed out. And if your tarantula has a malformed leg after a molt or during a molt, it's really helpful to do this amputation because sometimes this can cause molting issues in the future. So, you know, it's not a bad idea. And of course, the last thing that I kind of already mentioned, but it goes along with tarantula molting emergencies, is of course, repairing your tarantula. If something has ripped on the abdomen or on the leg or anything else, just repair it, you know, with those things I mentioned before, the cornstarch, the flour, um, spray dressing petroleum jelly, or even super glue. I've even heard that some people use clear nail polish. Um, you can use those things and it's okay, you know, I mean, you don't want to be in this position, but if your tarantula might die, you might feel better with yourself knowing that you tried to save it. You know, I mean, and it might just survive. We don't know, uh, but just be easy on yourself during this process because, you know, no one has the right to judge you um, if you've done your best. And sometimes that's just how it goes. You know, molting issues can be fatal, especially with older tarantulas. Uh, molting difficulties are very common. So, you know, sometimes we just have to do our best and be okay with that. Anyway, guys, I hope that was really helpful. Um, if you have any more tips for anyone who finds himself in this situation, or if you've ever had to save your tarantula from a molt, please share in the comments. I think that us sharing information about this is really, really helpful and can help people be better prepared for when they actually, hopefully never, but if they are ever in this situation because I'd love to be able to save more tarantulas and save more tarantula owners from uh, giving up the hobby because of a traumatic experience. <laughs> so anyway guys, um, thank you for watching. Uh, if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel. I put out videos every single week. And if you'd like to get these videos and my tarantula newsletter to your inbox every single week, you can sign up at tarantulaheaven.com. There's a newsletter sign up link. And you can also, when you sign up, get my uh, free tarantula tips and hacks guide. And you can also access my full tarantula guide if you uh, so wish to learn more about tarantula care. Um, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.